Hey guys, welcome back for another video. Today we're going to try and tackle the materials in V-Ray. First of all, I want to show you what kind of a setup I have here. It's a fairly simple scene. Basically, I have a falloff map or a falloff curve over here. I have one HDR image lighting up my scene and I have one additional extra V-Ray light for re reflections for my um, ball. There we go, we got three cameras. I'm gonna use a high camera, press Shift F so I can get into save frames. And there we go, that's the basic layout I have for this setup. Now, before I go in any deeper, I would like to tell you guys to go over on the site on dkcgi.net and check out the actual post for this video because I really think it's gonna end up being a rather lengthy and informative post so if you're interested in learning how V-Ray tackles materials I would really recommend going over there and checking out that post so let's start over here and go from the beginning so first things first open up the material editor now just so that we can visually see what we're gonna be doing so we don't have to like be re-rendering all the time i'm gonna go ahead and activate the active shade option so i'm gonna go f10 so i can open up the render setup uh, by default it should be set up on a production render like this so all you got to do is click on the little arrow over here and switch it over to active shade mode now when i'm in active shade mode i can choose my output size which is the re render resolution in this case it's a 400 by 600 that's a, that's okay i'm gonna go over to v-ray rt or the real-time renderer now from here i'm simply gonna come over here and when it says engine uh, type i'm going to choose cuda this is basically because I have uh, uh, NVIDIA graphic cards. So if you have um, maybe Radeon or AMD, you might want to go over with OpenCL. Or if you don't have any of the fancy graphic cards, you can just try with the CPU. It's going to give you some similar results. But I think that the, C the CUDA is the way to go, especially if you have a NVIDIA card. So I'm gonna choose CUDA. I'm going to leave the texture size at 512, which should give me enough um, resolution for the textures. I'm just going to go ahead and press active shade. Just give it a second until it activates. Here we go. And there we go. As we can see now, we have an active shade in our render. So whatever I do to this uh, material ball is going to reflect right away in our frame buffer so for example if i put a green material on it you can see right away it changes to reflect the changes i've done it's going to go back put it back all right so materials let's start from the beginning first thing you want to know for materials when it comes to V-Ray is that even though materials can be quite challenging to tackle down, V-Ray basically categorizes each material into three different or three basic categories or three basic parameters and that's diffuse, reflect and refract. Diffuse is the way that the primary color is going to be showing so for example right now it's neutral gray as we can see here because we have some light in the scene it kind of resembles more towards white but if you look at these parts it's gray for example now if i change this to something like you know, yellow since the diffuse was changed the overall color was changed so this is the diffuse the way to change it is by simply clicking on this uh, this field over here like this now when the when you click it you get this color selection 
uh, well color selection window the thing you need to understand over here is that even though you have a lot of things that you can slide around this is basically uh, divided into four different sections the first one is your direct hue picker so you can just go around and visually find the color you want for example let's say i want some um, sky blue i just click on the blue and then i have the second slider which is the whiteness so i can just select how much white i want to have into my color so i can just make it lighter like this and there we go i've received my color now the second way of choosing your uh, diffuse color is by choosing it over here from this portion of the window where it says red green and blue this is basically your rgb color selection now this is fairly helpful because a lot of times you're going to be stuck working on some project where your client will probably give you an RGB value for a lot of the things that you have to do. For example, maybe he's got some pattern or some color that he has um, taken for his product and he wants to use that same uh, exact color. So he would give you the numerical values for the RGB. So you just have to go over here for the red, you input the numerical value, then you go for the green and the blue. That way you get the exact color that your client wants. And the last way to choose it is by the hue, saturation and value, which is basically this all put together. So you have the, the saturation, which is basically the whiteness, and then you have the value, which is going to push it towards black or white. So at the end, it all, it all boils down to personal preference as to which kind of pick you want to choose. So I'm going to go click OK and keep it like this. So the next thing is that even though we, you know, we're using just a color, it doesn't stop at a color. We can just click over here on this little uh, square and it's going to give you an option to use uh, something from the browser. So I can put in anything here. For example, I can put in a gradient. Let's gradient like this. And then I can choose colors, which colors I want to use. And let's go ahead and just choose something like red white and maybe blue let's see what this thing does okay so we've uh, gotten some interesting result but still it's not what we needed so in case we get something like this it basically means that our uvw unwrap is none existent as you can see when i click here i have applied two uvw maps but they're both turned off so i can just turn one of them on and this looks like it's the right one yeah this is the right one same for the bottom let's see yeah well, see, the thing is, I've basically made two different uh, UVW maps, depending on what kind of a map I want to apply to it. So as you can see, I changed it to a gradient map, and now it resembles my entire model. So the diffuse, what is here, uh, what here is important to remember is the diffuse controls the basic color of your model so if you want to change the base of the model you have to change the diffuse and if you're going to be using a procedural map or maybe even a texture then you need to have uvw maps applied to your texture otherwise it's not going to look right and you're gonna be stuck with some problems that you're gonna have to deal with later on so now that we saw what the diffuse can do, 
I'm going to uh, right click here and clear this material. So I want to go over here and choose and make my diffuse something like a dark color, almost black, something like this. Not black, but almost black. All right, so the second thing I want to show you is the reflect option. Now, reflect is quite self-explanatory. It controls how reflective the surface of the material is going to be. So the way to control it is interesting to say the least because when you click here you're basically getting the same color selection now the thing here is you want to remember for example is you want to probably stay on the black and white portion of the line for example you can choose color but that way your reflections are gonna be colored so if you just want to retain just the reflection you want to only work with this slider over here now this slider is basically telling you how reflective your surface is going to be for example if it's on a black over here that means that your entire model is non-reflective while if you scroll it downwards to the bottom your object is very reflective which you can see over here now we're getting almost a metallic looking a look for this so this slider is basically controlling it the is controlling the reflection from zero percent to hundred percent and this is basically subdivided into 255 units so you have 255 increments for your reflection. So you can be very precise on how much reflections you want in your uh, material. Now, for now, I'm gonna leave it to something like very reflective, but I would, I really shun away from using a 255, even if it's a very, very reflective uh, surface. I don't want to go into the extremes. I would probably use something like 250 or so for it just because sometimes it can make some issues or provide some problems. So in order to get away from issues like that, just don't go over to the extremes of 255. Just go to something like 250. So click OK. All right, now let's see what else we have over here in the reflect portion of uh, the, the materials. Now, the second thing here that's quite important is this reflection glossiness uh, value. By default, it's set up as one. And this means that, well, at least this uh, parameter is going to control how glossy or how blurred your reflections are going to be. So what this means is when it's set up as one, it means you have 100% clear reflection. So there is no blurring happening. But for example, if I go and change this to like say 0.9, as you can see right away on the ball over here, all the reflections are starting to get blurrier. This means we're getting about 10% of blurring on the reflections. If we go 0.8, check out what happens here as soon as I press the enter. As you can see, the reflections are getting even blurrier. Now, if I go to something like 0.5, now you can barely see any reflections and all of it has been scattered around and it's basically showing it uh, grayed out version of it because it's distributing the entire reflections all over the surface. So this basically goes from 0, 0.0 or 0 to 1.0. Whereas in this case with a ref reflection uh, glossiness of 0 0.5, we can barely see any reflections. So even though you can go lower, I would never go below 0 0.5. Even 0 0.6 is a very, very strong uh, blurry effect. As you can see, at 0 0.7, we are going to be able to see something. 
yeah, like this. You can see some reflections, but anything below 0 0.6, it's pointless to go. And another thing that you want to remember, especially when you're be, uh, you will be tweaking this parameter, is that when you're working with glossy reflections, they take a lot of time to render. So use with caution, because if you go overboard here, you're going to end up with very long render times. All right, now, here's a, one more important thing over here, and that is the Fresnel reflections. Now, in the 3.x version, this is ticked on by default, but in the 2.x version, it's ticked off. And this is what happens when you tick off or on. I'm just gonna put this to zero, zero back, back to 0 0.9 so we can see better. Now I'm gonna tick it off. See what happens here. As soon as I tick this off, there we go. The surface becomes very, very reflective, something like glass. Now, why is this happening? Well, basically this is happening because you have something called an index of reflection when it comes down to controlling the reflections. So when Fresnel reflections is turned on, that index of reflection comes into play. So by default, this thing is locked up at 1.6. And this index of reflection is basically the angle of which you can see certain reflections when they're turned towards you. For, uh, you can find an entire uh, list of different materials and their values for the IOR on Google, or just simply check the post i'm probably gonna leave a link over there to a site or somewhere that you can find a longer list of ior values for different materials now for like i said by default this is at 0 0.6 if we turn it down to like let's say 0 0.2 we should get us a tighter angle in which we're going to be getting reflections for example if we lower it down to one check what happens with the reflections they're gone because at one you basically have z zero chances to see any reflections because the angle is a dead angle so with a zero or 1.1 you can start seeing some uh, reflections with two the angle is much bigger, so you can uh, you get to see a lot of a lot more reflections. With four, you get even more reflections, and then when you get to something like very high, like fifty, you end up basically with the same setup as if you would have no Fresnel reflections. There we go. So when you are working on a scene, and you want to have your uh, material be more reflective or catch more reflections. The thing that I've seen most of the times that students do is they crank up the reflection value. Like they go over here and crank, crank this up and expect to see more reflections. No, that's simply wrong. When you click over here and you ramp it up, you're basically controlling the intensity of the reflection. If you want more reflections, you need to increase the angle or the Fresnel IOR, which is this place over here. So let's bring it back to 0 point, or 1.6. And there we go. So before I skip over to refract, I want to go back and tell you guys one more thing about reflections. Now, we saw that we can control it over here, but what happens if we choose a color? For example, let's choose something like green. We click OK. The thing that we can see over here is that we have green happening in our reflections. Now, this is not the correct way to show it because basically now because I'm using the real-time renderer I'm getting this result 
if I were to make a simple render, my reflections are going to be very different. They're going to be more towards getting a result that's going to be very different because the reflections are going to be lacking all the green color. And that is basically the reason for this is that when I go over here in the options, we have a thing called energy preservation mode. When this thing is set to RGB, it means whatever color you have in the reflection slot, that color is going to be taken away from the reflections. So instead of getting green reflections, you're going to get reflections that are more, uh, they're going to look more like red or blue. I know this kind of sounds uh, complicated, but I'm going to say it again. Check out the post on the site and there you're going to see a lot of pictures that are going to show you exactly what I mean. But just in case you want to know how you can get green reflections, you need to change this energy preservation mode from RGB to monochrome. In this case, you should get something like this. All right, I'm going to go back, change this to RGB, get back here, and from the reflect, I'm going to make it so it's something like this. All right. All right, now let's just take a look at the last part. And this is the refraction portion of our material. Now, if I go over here and click on the refract, I'm going to get the same color picker. Just like with the reflection, when I'm working with refraction, I can control how refractive my material is going to be by sliding this slider. Now, let me just explain what refraction means. Refraction is the ability of a material to let light pass through it, or better known as how visible a certain material is going to be. Like, is it translucent or not? So if I just take this and just slide it downwards, something like this, we can see that in the viewport, I'm getting a, a, ver a fairly transparent view. But here on the side, I can see that my material looks like glass. So basically, by just changing the refraction, you end up with something like this. And while we're here, this is something that you should know. If you're making glass, all you need is a black diffuse, some reflection, and then refraction. And that's it. You've made glass. Now, while we're still here, let me just tell you uh, what you should be uh, mining, My, uh, at least watching. This IOR value over here, this is the index of refraction. So here we have the index of reflection. This is index of refraction. Uh, usually these two should be the same. But in some cases, for example, uh, we had some uh, students have an issue happening when they've used this for a glass for a car. Now, they had a problem because the reflection of the window would uh, be the same as the refraction and they wouldn't be getting any reflections in that case i would recommend that you choose uh, one of the iors to be different than the other but in most uh, cases these two should stay the same now another thing that here uh, it's important is that you keep this glossiness at either one or zero depending on how frosty you want your glass to be so just like with the reflection glossiness the refraction glossiness it's going to give you a similar result like you're going to get a frosted glass but the problem with this is that it really really tends to slow down your renders now 
for example here if you take a look at how my material looks like now it does look like a frosted glass but remember ref uh, glossy reflections at render time extra render time glossy refractions <laughs> end up adding a lot of extra rendering time so be very careful as to how you use the frosty glass or the glossy refraction parameter so i'm going to go back put it to one and get this glossy back to one all right so a few more things about the refractions and I would like to end it here because I think I'm going to be getting close to 30 minutes and I don't want to get this any longer. So, so what you want to click here is this button where it says affect shadows. Without this, take a look at how your model looks like. It's basically treating the entire model as an opaque model. So it doesn't treat it like a glass or something like uh, it would let light go through it. Once you click Effect Shadow, just take a look at how this thing changes right away. You click it and instantly it starts resembling glass more realistically. So whenever you're using uh, refraction to make glass or windows always make sure you tick on effect shadows now another thing that's worth mentioning here is this portion over here where it says fog color this is basically going to allow you to color your glass so click here choose what kind of color you would like you have to have your glass for example, something like pink, like this should work. All right. And there we go. Now we're getting something happening. But this effect is, from what I can see, it's very strong now. Now this multiplier over here, if I go 0 0.1, now I can see something closer to the color I've chosen. Now, the great thing about using color for uh, coming from the fog, opposed to like, let's say if we add it in the reflect, is that in this case, V-Ray is trying to see or intelligently look at your model and see where it's thinner, so it can show you a more realistic color opposed to the thicker parts where the color is darker so if you have an overlap of like let's say three or four layers you get a lot more dark colors which you can see it here it almost looks like it's black so if i get this to be even lower something like let's say 0 0.03 this is even better as you can see it it's even closer to this color let's go even lower zero zero point there we go with the lowest setting you can get some color into your glass and give it some interesting look on how you want it to look like now the last thing i want just to uh mentioned before uh, we stop with this video is the brdf this is basically going to control how your reflection is going to be shown you have the fang the blind the ward and the latest with the 3.2 version of uh v-ray it's the ggx or the microfast gtr this is by far the best option to use especially if you're going to use it on something that has blurry uh, blurry reflections because depending on the angle at which you're seeing uh, your reflections as it gets near the edges the blurring is going to be more pronounced this is like i said 
a very very helpful thing because prior to this there was a way that you could have you could have accomplished that but you had to stack the reflections with different fall off curves so for now we in this video we checked out the diffused we checked out the reflection and the refraction we saw some of the uh, fog color we saw some of the uh, brdfs as well as the energy preservation mode so since this video is really uh, getting on the long side i hope you guys like the video and also you managed to learn something and again i'm going to say it again go over on the site and check out the post i'm going to put links over there with uh, renders that are probably going to try and explain this a lot better and if you like this video then um, like it on youtube subscribe comment and share it around so we can reach more people and i'll see you next time